Good evening. Good evening. No, I won't settle. Read by the author, Sherelle Omienka Bidiaco Garth. No, I won't settle. No, will I be broke? Not after all the lessons that I've been taught. Lessons of how people can push your backs against the wall and harassing you until you fall, trying to make you feel unfit to run an operation that was never legit. No, I won't settle. Nor will I be brought. Not after all the lessons that I have been taught. The lessons and dedication and commitment that are paid with a price in exchange for avoiding a long, drawn-out fight. Covering the possessions of others. It's more than a sin. No, you can't win. It will only get you bypass jail and straight to hell. And those who participate in it don't seem to sell them farewell. No, I won't settle. Nor will I be brought. Not after all the lessons that I've been taught. The lessons and how hands can become tied. Making an organization uh, result to losing their pride. Conspiring a crime, working up plans like this can only get you time. Plotting schemes to lay hold and blame will only get you caught up into the heat of the flame. While screaming out, it's a low-down dirty shame. No, I won't settle. No, will I be brought. Not after all the lessons that I have been taught. Lessons of how time can be uh, recaptured, nor can it be replaced with money. It could never be erased. To the human race, it's a disgrace and such a waste. No, I won't settle, nor will I be brought. Not after all the lessons that I have been taught. Lessons and lies and how people use them to reprise. Those who invest in them can make them thrive and survive and somehow stay alive. The real lesson is first you receive the lesson, then you get the teaching, and somewhere in between there is the preaching. I don't want to leave you with the impression that I've settled, nor that I've been brought and forgotten all the lessons that I have been taught. Voices Out of Zion, arranged by the author Omika Ombiriako Garth. These voices out of Zion are crying. Take up a wailing for my people, for a voice of wailing out of Zion shall be heard. Take up a wailing for my people. You moaning women, you moaning women, take up a wailing for my people. Women will come from all over just to stand on holy ground, from the east and the west and the north and the south. These women will be put to the test to cry out in one great voice, to atone for all of our sin, then we shall be a great nation, and they shall atone for the nation's sin all over the world for men. Welcome, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me this morning. 
we are getting an early start and having our discussion this morning. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining me. You've got your Omi Inca 7, and we are live. We are featured on Oracle Divination Network and my mother station uh, that I'll be broadcasting from, as well as from my speaker broadcast. I like to say that we are creatures of habits, and we are talking about the coronavirus. And ladies and gentlemen, this is only from the perspective of Sherelle M. Garth. And may I add a disclaimer? This is the thoughts and views only of Ominka 7 and not of the actual radio station. I'd like to thank you and say that I hope you will uh, include your viewpoints and call in to our radio station because we would love to have your viewpoints here. And uh, let's see here. Uh, we, we're going to tell you in a minute um, where you can actually call in and you can be featured on our show. Uh, we are broadcasting live on Blog Talk Radio Station as well as on Speaker. And on the Blog Talk Radio Station, you can call in at 760-539-3242. Four, seven. Uh, let me make sure. Yes, we want you to call in on that station to voice your opinion. It is going to be very heated. It will be a heated night, I'm sure, before the end of our discussion because I'm going to say a few things that most people may not agree with, but nevertheless, it is my opinion, and I have a right to that opinion. And can I get a clap from the audience for our and we want to thank the audience for being out there supporting us. Now, once again, I want to say that the things that I'm about to talk about, they're not your ordinary things, but I want to give you some foundations and the grounds to lay my um, uh, beliefs on. And as I build this house, I have to have a foundation. So I have to build a foundation from facts uh, that I've gathered. Uh, one of the things I like to say is that when I first uh, became aware of the coronavirus, I was actually uh, viewing one of the news reporting, of maybe from CNN, and they indicated that this virus was in the Wuhan area of China. And I began to see where the various different foods preferably meats were generated uh, that the actual Chinese people uh, consumed. And the meats that they showed were, were actually animals that most of your people would never eat. However, the Chinese have always eaten things like bats, turtles, snakes. They've always eaten exotic uh, meats. Throughout the world, many, many, many years before we were even, you know, uh, on this planet and came to this particular area, Chinese were eating exotic foods. And they didn't die off many years ago. And what would make us think that they're now having virus problems from the same meat? Now, the research showed that they were told that these meats were going to cause a problem. None of the upper echelons ate this type of meat, but only the lower class of people who were underclass people. And I know that poor people do have to consume foods that are not the best, just as African Americans have consumed so-called soul food, and it was the rut of the litter. And if, if you were eating high on the hog, you weren't an African-American back during the 60s. If you were eating hog maws and if you were eating chitlins, then you were eating low on the, law, on the hog. But those who ate high on the hog were those upper echelons. But nevertheless, 
we have continued to eat those hog maws and eat those so-called lower parts of the pig that wasn't good for us, and we're still here. We haven't died off, nor have we created any virus from the chitlins. Now, what would make us think that these Chinese have now started eating meats that would carry viruses if they didn't carry them ancient years ago? That, I thought, did not pan out. It did not parallel with what I know to be true. And as I looked at that situation, I immediately said, can this be a ploy to make us think that the Chinese are bringing this virus in? Then I later began to read and found out that I need to test to see if this virus is airborne or blood pathogenic. It was confirmed that it was airborne. I do know a little bit about the laboratory. Uh, when you go in the laboratory, things that are created in the laboratory have to fan out to meet certain criteria. You cannot create something in the laboratory and then, uh, well, you cannot ask for a patent, a patent on something unless then it was created by somebody. That's the only way you can get a, pat a patent on a product or virus. And when I found out that this virus, there was a request for a patent to be on this virus. Why would a patent be on this virus? And the only way they could have gotten a patent on it, it had to be made in a laboratory. These are the things that I was discovering through other people's research. So as I thought about that, I said, okay, I heard more information that this wasn't the first time that this virus was spoke of, that it had been spoken of several years ago, and it had been projected that if this virus got loose, that it would persist until way in the 21st century, and that the virus itself was created to be an antidote to cure something. So my question is, if someone went in the laboratory to create this virus, what was their intention? Was it intention to address the population boom and to reduce population? Or was it created as an antidote? But for what virus was it going to be used? I then began to question myself about could this possibly be population control, or could it be uh, could it be the way people wage war? Could this be a part of the civil war? Could we possibly be using this particular virus as a, as a chemical warfare? And had chemical warfare began, and because no one wanted to excite the people. They have never sat down with us at a round table to tell us that we are in a chemical warfare. These were the things that came to my mind because China in the Wu-Tang area suddenly started creating the, pan the panacea of the epidemic and locking down the city and the country and the people were being locked down and actually quarantined. However, my question was, how did the virus get from China over to the United States? Well, actually, it went to Italy, to Europe, and then to the United States. I questioned all of this being in the area of science, working in the laboratory in pathology, it only stand the reason that something was going on here, whether we were in a chemical warfare, fighting an actual civil war, or this, live, this virus was created in the laboratory to do the actual fighting of our warfare. Now, as I said, you have a right to your opinion, and so do I. 
And if there's anyone out there that wants to concur with me on this, anyone out there that would like to call in to the radio station, now is the time to do so. And you can call in at 760-539-3247. And this is Oracle Divination Network. And we're also featuring live on Spreaker. And that's Omi's organic broadcaster. You can call in at this very moment. Please do so. I will invite you to do so. And thank you for being a part of this show. Now, I know it's going to stir up a lot of controversy, but I thought I would put that out there. Now, here's the other thing I'm looking at, the fear factor of it all. In the last two weeks, we've been bombarded with the fear tactic. A frenzy, I might add. When you become frightened and on a frenzy, you're liable to do anything. Now, the thing that I worry about are those people that have been tested and have to be quarantined. Now, I know that there's an election coming up and you probably are getting prepared for it and so am I. That's one of the biggest things. And the 2000 census. And with the 2000 census, we know that you have to be in your home in order to be counted. And why would we need that census? That census would tell us how many people in what areas and what nationality were going to be voting. It's a big, big thing to know who are these constituents that are going to be participating in the election. And we know with that 2000 census, we're going to need you to be in your house. So what better opportunity than to quarantine you to your house to tell you do not leave the house because eventually we're going to need your name, address, your nationality, and get information that will better equate us with whether or not you'll be voting in the election. So it came to reason that that might be the reason for the quarantining. But you have to convince people and frighten them enough to make them believe you have to stay in the house. We have a curfew. So the deaths that are occurring, I understand that they're on the senior citizens and that there was really no cure, no antidotes, and that the larger portion of the deaths were on senior citizens because they were the most vulnerable people. I tend to beg the difference with that because I would think that our children and infant and toddlers would be just the same as the elderly people being vulnerable. And as I see the elderly people being carted off in the nursing homes, it came to me that maybe there is a ploy to eliminate the elderly. Maybe this is population control and maybe the elderly have to go first. And in my mind, as I was thinking, I said, if we are going to be quarantined, they would be getting all of the locations ready to lock people down. Now, you have to put the fear in people about some particular death that will be created, and you'd have to be able to control the population by making them do what you want. So you'd have to put a fear in them, and the fear would be you can die from the coronavirus, which people were dying. Now, the thing I didn't understand, when people were tested and found to have the virus, they were told to go into their homes and to inoculate themselves and quarantine themselves for several days. Now, there was no antidotes or medicine or antibiotics being given, so what were they taking to control this virus, even within their own home? And what were they being given as an antidote? But yet I was told that they won't have an antidote ready until a year from now. Why a year from now? What would be so difficult that they couldn't go in the laboratory to create an antidote? And then I thought... Can't you take a bit of the virus to create the actual antidote? And wouldn't this virus have been used as an antidote 
to cure some of the people. But yet we're still talking about um, we can't control it, we have no cure for it, and at the same time, we are talking about putting the tests out to test everyone. Well, if you test everyone and have no cure for it, all they will find out is that they've been affected and have no antidote. Why shouldn't somebody be in the laboratory right now creating an antidote and putting in the overtime to make it happen so that we can get a handle on this thing? Now, as a spiritualist, I do know that most things lead with fasting and prayer. No one has brought um, the priest up, the deacon, or the evangelist or apostle up in a day of prayer. No one has even seek to go to the spiritual realms to talk about, let's lay hands on this virus. Let's, let's begin to root out, pull down, tear up, and crucify this virus through our words, because we know our words are powerful. And we know that when there's a time of crisis, we call on the power of prayer. Where is the power of prayer in this situation? Why have not we called on those great evangelists to go and tell it that we have a mighty God that still sits on the throne and that resides over the issues of men? to this day, but nevertheless we have panicked and ran in many different directions and believed that this thing was going to wipe us out. I can respect and appreciate President Trump coming to the rescue. He's now our real hero, if we didn't know it or not. To some, he's going to be a great savior. And during this time of election, isn't that what he would like to be, and any elected uh, official that was running, wouldn't they like to be the hero? And that's exactly what Trump is going to be called in the end of this thing, the hero. He's brought a solution, and money, as you know, is a solution to all. And money has stepped in and became the hero as he explained in his speech just yesterday that he's going to do everything he can to bring finance to the situation immediately to overturn those people's problems who are affected by this virus and cannot attend work and those who had to leave their jobs because of not being able to be in the public view, they will be paid and as well as the general public will be paid uh, all of the general population of the people. I think that is the best thing to do to soothe the mind of the people. Now that he's gotten our attention, and we're listening, and we're all ears, and he's soothing the mind of the people. Now, I don't know how much the salary of one month's salary would do. I don't know how long this virus is intended to be around here, but it sounds like somebody has control of this virus. Somebody knows when it's going to stop. But the best thing that African Americans can do is stop saying that this is not a lie or this is true. We know it to be true because real human beings are perishing on a daily basis. Some more in, in certain states than others. So we know it exists. And there's something running loose here on our planet. We know that. It has been uh, decided that there is truly something that's invading our planet right now. But our question is, how much of it is controllable? And who has the authority to step in to recoup the, what is left of our country and to soothe the people's mind, who has the ability to come and talk to the restless and the faint at heart? And why aren't we calling on our great speakers to speak to their communities and congregation? 
we are rendering ourselves helpless by saying that there's no way out of this thing. This system, as we know it, is on its way out. And I do believe that. We will never know our world and system to be the same. It can never be the same after those people that have perished and made their transition. And it will have to usher in a brand new panacea of a new world order. You knew the new world order was coming. You read about it in your bibliotes, your Bibles. It prophesied that there would be a war and rumors of war and that there would be this war of Armageddon. And this is a form of a war that's happening with us now. We're being plagued upon by a chemical warfare, believe it or not. Which countries could be against us? Who is really fighting us? Will that ever be revealed? We have got to use our conscious ability to go within ourselves and to ask ourselves the most prized possession question. Where did this virus come from? Who was it intended to impede upon? And is population control an issue here? And is someone attempting to control population with a virus? And if so, those people that are inflicted with this condition, will they perish or will they overcome this condition and will there truly be an antidote created to save people's lives? We are at the crossroad, people. And for those of you who are spiritual, I think you know what I mean. When you are at the crossroad, we have to make decisions. And at the crossroad, we can go and drop our pennies on each one of the four corners and make our request. We can truly make our request and know that the ancestors are still with us. Though we cannot see them, we know that they are still with us and we can make our request known. Now, that we know that we're gods, we can decree a thing. And when you decree a thing, it will not return unto you void. So I've said to each and every one of my followers, if you're not a follower, go out and follow the leader. Go out and like and share this particular broadcast with someone and let them know I'm on the air and that I will soon be in the spirit. And when I go in the spirit, I will render my vocal cords to the Spirit and allow the Spirit to speak through me as if the Spirit was talking directly to you. I have to let the Spirit lead and guide me. I cannot lean on my own understanding because my own understanding may be misguiding. But I want you to know something. Each and every one of you have a philosophy, a viewpoint, and a vision about what is going on because you share in God's likeness and you share in God's essence. And that essence that's within us allows us to know the mind of God and to think on the same terms that God has spoke of. Do not let these people on the broadcast get on here and try to parallel their statements and sync up with the general news who has put us in a frenzy of fear. Just to look at those people coming off the ships and to see what was happening, what better way of putting fear into the world than to show them a ship that's sinking with people on it that have been diagnosed with this coronavirus. How fearful, how shameful it would be to make them think that your next ship trip will be sinking and going down because of a coronavirus. Now, if you do not have the antidote, but you know how to examine the individual for the symptoms, which are not flu-like, I understand. One minute they tell us they're flu-like, the next minute they say that they're different. Now, I do know this much about them. They do not like the sun. This virus is, is, is reflecting away from the sun. The sun will help to kill this virus. 
If you are African American, your body is vibrating with the sun and it's heated extra hot that it will kill anything that comes in contact with it. But yet we have a virus that hates the sun. How much do we know about this virus? And is anybody in the laboratory gathering facts on this virus to find out what the antidote would be to kill the virus? We cannot pussyfoot around, chewing the fat on every station, every channel, lurking out there, putting fear in. We've got to speak solution. We've got to be solution-oriented. But I know for a fact, if we are coming into our own and this is a new world order, then we are coming up as gods. Gods can decree a thing. Gods can call a thing into existence. Why haven't we began to turn to the gods in the universe and say that we want these things removed from the earth and stretch out our hand over the water and ask for a blessing? Nobody wants to be spiritual now that this has happened. But you could have gone in anybody's church on Sunday and heard them pleading the blood of Jesus over every dire situation, over every disease, and they considered it to be so. They decreed it, and they walked away as if it was finished. Why can't we have a powerful corporate prayer on the daily basis where we come together with one powerful word, spreading our hands out over our head, decreeing that this virus is, is defeated, decreeing that this virus must flee and leave us. Why can't we do that? And why hasn't some official, some authority taken authority to do this? Are we now turned non-spiritual? Are we now not believing in God anymore? What is the problem? What seems to be the problem? And who can tell us what do we need to do to make a change? A change is definitely needed. Stay tuned.
Voices Out of Zion, arranged by the author Omika Ombiriako Garth. These voices out of Zion are crying, take up a wailing for my people, for a voice of wailing out of Zion shall be heard. Take up a wailing for my people. Thank you so much, ladies you and gentlemen, women. for being with me you this evening. Women. Or Take this morning, I like to say a uh, bargain to those people who are just coming in and the stay tuned. And the west and the north and the south, these women will be put to the test to cry out in one great voice to atone for all of our sin. Then we shall be a great nation and they shall atone for the nation's sin all over the world for men. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to Omi Inca's Organic Broadcaster on our speaker show. And you are listening to Oracle Divination Network off of Blog Talk Radio Station. And we are so glad to have you here. And please do make yourself at home. Be sure to tell a friend and like and share. And also become a subscriber Go down below and subscribe to my channel. And if you're on the Organic Broadcaster, do become a follower, okay? And give me the two thumbs up and let somebody know that I'm on the air this morning and I'm coming on rather early talking about a controversial issue of that coronavirus. And if you're out there and would like to have something to say about the coronavirus, now is the time to call in, and our call-in number is 760-539-3247. And that is on our uh, blog talk station, okay? And I want you to understand that This is an open communication. We do encourage everyone to have an opinion of their own because you don't want to be shot down by believing everything you hear or see. Believe half of what you see and none of what you hear because it's very important that you should do your own fact-finding and research. You do not want to be running on a tactic of fear and you do not want to have someone leading you around by the nose telling you all these horrible things that can happen. Once again, we are live here on Blog Talk, and thank you so much for listening in. And Blog Talk followers that are out there, uh, I know I've been away for a while, and I've been on other stations, but we are still going to maintain 100% there. And I'm going to ask you to tell a friend, to tell a foe, to come in and listen, and that Omi's on the air. And we're talking about that controversial issue, coronavirus. And you can get into the discussion, and you can be a part of this discussion. And all you have to do is call in at, hold on, all you have to do is call in at 760-539-3247. We're taking phone calls here. You can talk live and talk black to me. Just talk black to me. Let's get on the topic of black folks. Now, we what do we know about the coronavirus when it actually is in the body of a black person? Have we did any research? One of the things that they are discovering is that it hates the sun. And you must remember that African American people are sun people. Yes, we are. So with our melanin and the heat in our body, They do not like the sun. So we know that. And do we have any statistics of the number of cases by race of those that are perished and transition? We need to ask our CNN news and our Fox news if they can provide us with this information. We want to know the statistics of how many African Americans have actually perished opposed to non-Melanite people. And this is good for statistics for our own purpose. And we also want to know, why are people buying up so much tissue? What does this mean? I know that when you have uh, you have symptoms of the flu, you have the runny nose, and you may sometimes have symptoms of having loose bowel. 
Now, is this to insinuate and to make mockery of the fact that someone is dying slowly from this uh, coronavirus that you need tissue? I think we need to take this to another level and look at the fact that we might need all staples, not only the tissue, but we might need paper towels, we might need soap, we might need antiseptic. All these things should be made available at the disposal of the government, free of charge. Now, I know he's going to give us some money. That hasn't happened yet. I don't know exactly if everyone's getting the same amount of $1,000, but I do know that $1,000 can get out of your hand real quick. It's not a whole lot of money. And for those who think they're going to be rich, once they get the $1,000, uh, congratulations. Maybe you are on the coupon kick and you are using and buying everything with the coupon. But it's going to take a whole lot more than $1,000 to secure those who are off work and who have to pay their rent or mortgage. Not to mention those who are not getting food stamps. Maybe he should open up the doors where we all can get a box of food, of food stamps, a- until this thing ties over. I would like to get those extra staples because it's very hard to get out to the store. And when you get there, sometimes the shelf are empty. Maybe the food could be sent to us through various different programs, Peapod, Amazon. Maybe that would be an excellent way of saying, hey, I hear you out there. I know that some of you are not eating well and you're ordering out because you want the delivery. Can he deliver those boxes to us, Mr. President? Can you deliver an actual uh, food box to us from the food stamp? We'll be glad to get it because it's not cheese and powdered eggs. We now know that those boxes are consisting of good things that people love to eat. Now, people are going to be in their home a lot. So guess what? They're going to be picking up that mobile, making phone calls, making all kinds of orders, buying all kinds of things that they never had time to sit down to buy before. Wouldn't this jumpstart the economy by getting people out shopping, buying that big screen TV, buying that new bed that they wanted, or that new couch set? So now we are jumpstarting, we are jumpstarting the economic by buying and circulating money. Currency needs to be circulated. I'm sure you know that. And without currencies being circulated, without currencies being circulated, we cannot jumpstart the economy. A lot of things is happening here. Let's put our thinking caps on. We're, we're, we're jumpstarting the economy. We're getting off the streets so that when they start the 2000 census, we will be available to make our mark and to give our statistics of the number of heads of household and our race on the census. They are now hiring all kinds of census takers to work because they know it's going to be a real, real challenge, and at the same time, much easier than it has been in the past because you will be in your present home. And not to mention that I want you guys to draw the attention of the fact that a lot of flights are shut down or shutting down and a lot of places we just can't travel to and we can't get, we still can't get a a cab and it's still difficult to get on a train to go different places. But why is it so easy and less costly to get on a plane to go to China, when in fact that is where they claim the actual virus came from. But yet any American citizen can get on a train, excuse me, get on a plane and fly there under cost. Why? So why haven't we shut down those flights? A lot of things are a mystery. And inquiring minds certainly want to know. And we have to be able to rely on our government to tell us these things. Now, we're big boys and big girls. It's time to put your big boy 